I wanted to show you um, how I do pattern repeats in Photoshop. Um, I know there's a lot of different ways to do it. I have friends that do it completely differently with amazing success. Um, but I wanted to show you the way I do it in case it jives with you. Um, I don't think there's like one right way to do it. Um, different ways are easier for other people. And if you want to check out, um, I believe Barry J, who's my good design friend, has a great tutorial on how to make um, a pattern repeat in Photoshop the way she does it. But here's how I do it. So this is just an example of what I would start with. Um, it's, you know, the, all the elements that I would want in my repeat. And I kind of, the way I do it is flexible where I don't, I kind of work it as I go and make it fit together. So what I would do is I have all my layers here um, in my layer palette and what I do is I take all of them except for the background and I go convert to smart object. And the reason I do that is because the smart object makes it one layer so it's easy to work with but you can still by double clicking on it you can go in and edit that layer are all the individual layers within. And after you've repeated this smart object and you want to go in and change something, it changes it in every single repeat. So you don't have to worry about doing it everywhere. It just you can do it one one thing, one place and it updates the whole pattern. So I start with my um, design in the middle and then what I do is I make a copy of this smart object layer and then I go to, uh, let's see, filter, other, offset. When you offset a, um, when you offset a smart or a layer that's not a smart object, it doesn't um, maintain the information. When it's a smart object, you can go in and adjust it. Um, as many times as you want but if you do it to a regular layer you won't have that option it just does it and it is what it is so that's another reason to use smart objects um, this I had already set up because it remembers the last offset that I did so this is kind of the right set up the right way but you're gonna it'll normally start you at zero and you can either slide it or input numbers and what I do is I start doing my vertical repeat and I slide it down until I like where it fits. So say I'm going to leave it there. And you need to remember this number, 1476. So I usually write it down as my vertical repeat, 1476. And the reason why is I'm going to go and duplicate that layer and go in. And then I want it to go up the other way. So I want it negative 1476, so then it repeats it up. And see how here it's covering up part of the design. So I want to drag it beneath that so the that flower is on top. Okay, so now I have my vertical repeat already. Um, and now I want to do my horizontal repeat. And I like doing a half drop repeat because it mixes it up a little bit. So I'm going to do a half drop repeat this time. So this time I'm going to take my, um, let's take this repeat down here and copy it. And so for a half drop repeat, the vertical needs to be half of what it was here. So half of 1476 is, great, now I'm going to test out my math, I think 738. So that now it's, it's half dropped and then I'm going to slide it and I can make it whatever I want, whatever fits on this side. So if I like that, I'm going to make it a little closer. Um, and I usually try to have it be even numbers. Um, it's important with the verticals. I guess not so much with horizontals, but I just like to do it. So I'm going to do 1576 horizontal, and I'm going to write that down um, so I remember it. Okay. And... Then I need to do my vertical repeats above and below this guy, so I'm going to copy that layer. And um, I want 
this one to be negative 738 so it fits right above it. And again, it's see how it's on top of the art, so I want to drag it under so that it's underneath, so that the background's always underneath, so you can move your layers around. And then I need that guy repeated again down here. And this time you want to do to get it below, you want to do the 738 will put it back where you started with the half drop, but then you need to add the 1476 to that, which was remember our original repeat down because now we're going all the way down so 1476 is that right oh plus 738 sorry 1476 plus 738 so I have to do my math really quick 2214 so 2214 Okay, and then this background is covering it, so I know I need to move it up above. There we go. So I'm, I'm just adjusting those smart object layers. So now that we have this side, the, your half drop, all we need to do is repeat that on the other side. So what I do is I take these three layers that I've recreated and repeat them. And then what you do is you just, where you have the horizontal, you just switch this to a negative. So it goes on the other side. So then I'm going to grab this one, the middle one here, and do a negative number for that. And then the top one, a negative number for that guy. So I'm just copying those layers. I'm using my auto select tool, clicking on this one. See, and I'm so I'm on that layer, copying it, and then just switching it so that it's negative so it pushes it to the other side. Okay, so basically here I have, now I have a full half drop repeat. The one thing I don't like about this, and I'm going to show you this so you can see how you can tweak it really easily when you're using smart objects. I don't like how all my blue, um, I don't even know what those flowers are called, poof, I call them poofs. These blue poofy flowers, I don't like how they're all clustered together, so I want to move one. So what you do is you can take any of your smart object layers and double click on it. It's going to open it up for you and you can see I have all my original layers in here still maintained. I'm going to take this small little poof here. Oops, I, I grabbed the whole, I grabbed an individual layer so I need to take it off auto select. I'm going to drag this guy. Oops. <laughs> Okay, now I have him. Drag him down. Let's put him over here and see how he looks. So all I did was really move that layer around and you can move things around as much as you want. We can move the B, whatever. And then I'm just going to save this smart object that I opened up. And it takes a little bit of time because it's updating it in your pattern. And actually if I, well, it's not going to let me. So now that's updated. Now if I go back to my pattern, you can see he moved over here. So now all my blues aren't all clustered together. So if I go back and forth, you can see what I did. He went, I moved him from there to there and see how it updates him everywhere. So that's why I like using smart objects when I do um, offset repeats in Photoshop. Um, the math is a little bit tricky, but once you get it, it's not that difficult. It's just figuring out the half drop. So whatever your vertical drop is, you want it for your, when you move it over to the side and you do these um, ones on the side, you want it to be half of that. And then so half down and then half up. And then you have to remember you have to go a whole another drop down from that half. So that's why you add the, the, the whole drop, which is was 1476 plus the half drop, which was 738, and that's how you get the number for this one, that one down there. So um, I hope that wasn't too confusing, but that's how I do my um, Photoshop um, pattern making. And I found once you get the hang of it, it's the easiest way for me to do it because then I can update things and move them around. Hopefully this is helpful to you.